let's help out. You know, this is part of what being on YouTube is about. It's part of being a community. You know, um, it's great to go on YouTube and just find the answer to something or be able to watch a tutorial and do something. But if somebody's having a problem, it's also nice to help out. <laughs> Okay, hi gang. So Sterling Morris has put up a comment on uh, one of my videos about the Ergotron arms that I have. You know, uh, I've got a couple of videos on Ergotron now, well, more than a couple. But just saying how great they are, how they work with your drawing tablets, etc., etc. Now, I like to answer any and all comments. And if somebody needs help, I don't mind. So Sterling's been great about posting a video of his uh, issue, particular issue, uh, on YouTube. So I'm having a look at that right now. This might be a problem that affects other people as well. So I thought I'd just, you know, make this quick video about that. If you're having this problem or you're having a problem, then maybe this will help shed, you know, light on that issue for you. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so this is a quick video showing my Ergotron sit-stand uh, LX arm and how it's a little too sensitive here at the main, uh, the main pivot point whenever I'm drawing. Okay, straight off the bat, first thing I notice is that his desk is lovely and tidy, maybe just done for the video, but you know, he keeps his workspace well organized. He's already got another Ergotron there as well, uh, one of the smaller LX arms, you know, he's, he, he clearly knows how to put an Ergotron together. So yeah, he probably has a real problem here. Whenever I'm drawing, and I'm sure it's designed this way um, to, to move obviously very freely. And uh, maybe when I get the uh, 27 QHD Cintiq, uh, the, the extra cables might give it some, some tension, but right now there's, I don't have enough slack. Yeah, on the older Wacoms, like the 24, that's there, you can't just replace those cables, they're part of the Wacom. So if you wind them around something to give tension, it's more likely to give tension to the cable, put tension on the cable, rather than give added tension, weight, etc., to the Ergotron arm. You know, you just likely to do damage, so don't use the cables. Never use the cables. Carry on. Uh, to really wrap the cables around this uh, on my other Ergotron arm back over there um, This one actually is, is much more stiff um, From the main pivot point and I I feel like it might just be Because of the extra these cables that kind of put a little bit of pressure around there um, Or maybe there's less lubrication or maybe it's because this one's heavier Don't use cables for pressure um, This one just glides with you see if when I put my hand on here so if I'm if I'm standing uh, and drawing, or if I'm sitting, it feels almost worse if I'm sitting. But I'm standing, and I always I always uh, grab the hot keys. I actually I use these a lot. I know a lot of artists don't. I I actually I love my hot keys. Um, on my older Twenty One UX, which is pretty much the same as this, um, I use them all the time. Now I have the fancy Wacom remote, which is pretty much the same thing, but it just gives you everything on one side or the other, whichever, rather than having half of your keys on one side, which is kind of bad because if you're left-handed, that means you only ever use the keys on the right side of the Wacom. Never, barely ever use the keys on the left side of the Wacom, the hotkeys. Um, proven by how old that older Wacom is over there, I won't pan across to, uh, but the keys on the right-hand side of that old 21UX are worn, whereas the keys on the left side are pristine. You know, all the little thumb nubs are just flat. They're gone, they're worn away. But, you know, it's nice to have the remote because you can move it. If you're left-handed, you have it on that side. If you're right, you can, or you can just sit on your desk like it is now. But, either way, you shouldn't have to be holding on to 
the tablet to keep it where it is. I mean, yes, with an extraneous amount of weight, but not with just pushing with the pen nib or leaning with a hand. So I do use those um, almost more, probably more than my keyboard. So I'm, I'm usually always holding this anyways, um, but as I'm drawing uh, and I start to draw like this, the screen just wants to... Love the fact that you're rocking the finger, um, finger glove as well. I think that's brilliant. I've tried them. I just, I don't know. I just can't do it. I just can't bring myself to... They just don't feel right. I like to wear fingerless gloves a lot. Sometimes I wear those while I'm drawing. I stopped doing it in the videos now because people seem to just throw up too many comments about why are you wearing fingerless gloves. Um, it becomes a bit of a fashion channel thing, weirdly enough. But yeah, kudos for actually using the the actual glove. There. As you can see, o over time, it just wants to kind of float away with me, or float away from me. And even if I'm even if I'm holding it. Um, you know, it's, it's like, it's basically, I'm, I'm dealing with this tug of war. One thing I noticed for sure is that all the tension is coming from this part of the arm. This part, this part's fine, but this part here, there's not enough tension. It's, this is where the problem is. I've spotted something else as well. But. Where it's like, yes, I can kind of hold it in place but it still is wanting to, it's wanting to pivot this way more than it is, as far as the up and down, it's really pretty solid. And the vertical kind of vibration that you can see a little bit here when it wiggles, um, that doesn't really bother me. No, that's uh, that because it's all really on that arm. My pen not movements, on this but arm. what it does is this back, this side to side wiggle um, does make it you know, kind of difficult to, to draw on this. And when I'm sitting um, at the desk. So you've got loads of tension on the, the vertical with this arm but like you said the horizontal with this arm this arm here that's where the problem is that's why your vertical is fine and you're using both hands but yeah right. if i'm sitting here and i probably will drop this a little lower and actually eventually um i will ultimately end up bolting this through the desk a few inches from from the side so i can get the cintiq closer, further out to the middle of my screens, because when I'm drawing, I like to have it in the middle. And um, right now it's kind of stuck over here on, on the left side. I mean, I can get it, I can get it a pretty good distance, but um, anyways, I'd like to gain a few more inches. No, I had that exact same problem when I, when I decided to bolt my ergotron to the desk. It's, it was getting close enough, but if I went for the bolt rather than the clamp, I could get it to that perfect kind of distance as to where I wanted it. More importantly though, the bolt will really give you an amazing stability that I think the clamp has, but the bolt's better. When I'm sitting, uh, you know, and I'm trying to draw on it, I run into the same thing. Where it's like, I mean, this is, this is the slightest, this is basically the weight of my hand on this thing, and it's pushing it away from me. And so I, I feel like if I can, um, if I lower this another, you know, three quarters of an inch, um, there might be more resistance where the bottom of the Cintiq, by my right hand, um, over here, where this, oh, there's a shelf in the way, you can't really see, where this is hitting the, the desk, um, because it's, it's beveled on the bottom, so it's still. Generally, a lot of the times, I'll have my Wacom either touching the desk, or I'll have it mounted exactly as you have it here. And it's fine. I find that it's always better to have something touching the Wacom as well as the arm. You know, be it the edge of my desk or the top of my desk here. Or even my knees or, you know, if I'm stood down, then my gut. <laughs> but um, the reason being, you, you're just going to want that extra stability. If you just keep it floating in midair, remember that... For the most part, these things were built for monitors um, more than drawing tablets. They weren't made with that kind of incredible range of motion um, and still have somebody drawing on it. You know, it, it's made so you can either lock it off altogether or you can just, you know, keep it in place. So, realistically, I think, you know, 
what you might have to do is just move the section down on the arm the arm section sorry on the pole down so that it can sit on your desk like mine is doing right now that keeps it lovely and sturdy you know um or you know so it can just sit neatly along your your desk as well. kind of wants to try and slide up it um, but once it gets here uh, this is okay you know it kind of it kind of stays where it is but anyways I'm just wondering if you have experienced this sort of um, uh, I guess it's not an issue it's more like a, a nuisance um, it just the <laughs> thing just as soon as I start drawing it's just coasting away from me yeah, that shouldn't be happening at all. I think that realistically, it's yeah. I haven't experienced that in that way, but I have experienced it in the way that when I'm setting up my arm or a different arm, yeah, I've kind of yeah, I've seen it, and then you know, just resolved the problem. Uh, it's hard to resolve problem, obviously, not being there and being able to see it. Um, Hey, you never know. I might get like you know a a really rich viewer at some point who wants to pay me to fly out to help. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's really just a case of tightening this all up, um, making sure that everything is how it should be. And I have spotted one major problem, which is something um, you briefly mentioned anyway. Uh, which was a, about the pole being lubricated. And I can see lubrication all over that pole, even from here, and even though it's black, I can see that that pole is just covered. You know, luckily I'm looking at it on this nice big monitor. I can see that there's a lot of lubrication on here. Mine, if you look, is bone dry. You know, it's um, yeah, completely. It's like desert. There's no lubrication there, all that you can feel. There's probably a bit of lubrication inside still. You know, between this ring and the pole, but that's it. There shouldn't you shouldn't have any anywhere else. Um, realistically, there was another problem that I spotted which was this section here. There's a small black rubber ring there and another one at the top. And this looks as if it's leaning in a bit on that side. So I just want you to check that those two rubber rings there, these two seals, are still in good condition and you know, they're not broken. Because if one of those is broken, particularly the top one, then yeah, you're going to have problems. The best thing to do, I think, is to get rid of the lubrication. I would clean the pole off, just get some ordinary kitchen towel, clean off the pole, and then I would take this arm off of the pole altogether and clean inside there and take off about I'd probably say about 80% of the lubrication that's there you don't need much you need very very little and this looks to have tons of lubrication on it so take that off and that should work that should be absolutely um, I was able to get one angle when I was working the other day where it felt like if I was working sh kind of straight in line with it um, sort of like this let's see if we can you know, working at this angle, this seemed to um, produce less side-to-side -side movement. And I don't know if it's because of the position of where I got the arm on my desk. If I had it centered over here, where I have the other one uh, back there, if maybe that would be more ideal and I'd get less of this kind of side-to-side -side movement. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Anyway, just look. That's just a sweet spot. The more lubrication the arm has the more it feels every little sway so i think it's just 
finding its perfect sweet spot there. But you get rid of a lot of that lubrication and immediately you'll be able to, uh, you know, you should have a decent amount of resistance everywhere. Anyway, just looking for uh, any kind of help, solution, ideas. Uh, my dad had the thought that uh, maybe we could put a clamp right here that would basically just once, you know, just keep this thing from spinning. But it's not really, I noticed you're left-handed in your video, um, so maybe naturally, or not naturally, but but just maybe for some reason that, um, I don't know, the, the way it may, it could be because I... I get it. Um, I just don't think anything, being left-handed, I don't think it has anything to do with it. I think you push that way and that way. Do you know what I mean? I, you lean on different parts of the screen, so I think you'd notice it no matter what. Get rid of the lubrication, check these O-rings here, and, you know, maybe just try and move this section down a bit so the Wacom can normally be resting on the desk or against the edge of the desk or somewhere so you can, you know, always have that. But I don't know if wrapping rubber bands around it, and you asked, um, you see, I do have a level on my desk. The desk is level um, from front to back, side to side. So it's it's not just it's not that it's just that there's zero it seems to be like zero friction at this point. Um, and on my other Ergotron arm, there seems to be a little bit more. And I know this thing was covered in uh, lubricant um, so that it would move easily. Yep, but you don't want it to move easily, so just get rid of all the lubricant. In fact, you know the. These things being normally made for TVs, some people want to move them around a lot, but they're not touching them. You know, you move it, you leave it. Um, artists, obviously, having a Wacom on top, you're constantly moving it or trying to move it or pushing it or interacting with it. And, yeah, this needs to have a very stiff friction. So, But I'd much rather have uh, this kind of... Um, you know, strength and resistance at this joint because this still moves very freely, uh, as you can see. But it takes a little bit of pressure. You know, I even have to brace it with this arm, or I have to I have to like intentionally move it, which is great because if you're moving it, you want to be, you know you want to be moving it. Um, what's driving me nuts is this unintentional, you know, just this it's like this passive drift. As soon as I start drawing on it, it's it's coasting away from me. Um, and I've tried a number of, you know, uh, if I get like just the right angle, like like this is kind of working. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where it's, I'd like it to, you know, I'd like it to, I'd really like it to, to work. And I was just wondering if you had that kind of an issue, if you had any ideas. Uh, sorry, this was so stupid long, but this is kind of a really, really particular issue and the fan is making me nauseous in this thing um so yeah anyways thanks for any help feedback or ideas solutions would be great thanks okay so here's our plan of action make sure there's not too much lubrication on the arm uh, i think that's the problem at the moment get rid of excess lubrication take the arm apart at the pole and just get rid of most of the lubrication inside. You want this thing to be as rigid as possible, really. You don't want there to be movement in there. So yeah, get rid of that. Um, keep your Allen keys handy and just check. You won't need to bother with most of this because you said it's absolutely fine. If anything, I think it looks like it's offering you too much resistance, um, but that won't be affecting the problem that you've got. That's just personal preference. There's two O-rings here that I think just need to be double checked to make sure they're okay. The pole looks kind of at an angle, but you know, um, videos can do that sometimes. So just want to check that the pole is completely level with that spirit level. I know you've checked the desk already and said the desk is fine. But if the pole's leaning, then that could be a problem. I think this will clear up once you get rid of that lubrication. So try that. If that still isn't working just perfectly, then put the put the arm over here. 
you know, uh, at the back of your desk, near enough the other arm, and you should be fine. Um, that should sort out any little balance problems if they are coming from it being on the left side of your desk. I think it's always better to have something slightly under the Wacom. You know, like having it just touching your desk or the edge of the desk or your lap or something like that. It just cuts down on that friction. You know, mine is always touching something else. So give it a go. You know, maybe just by lowering this, you'll be able to do that. No, it'll be fine. Let me know how it goes. Hopefully I shall see you soon and see everybody else soon as well. If that has helped anybody else, if anybody else has similar problems, you know, comment below. Let's hear all about them. Let's see if between us we can kind of work them out. I think that these things are pretty straightforward. You know, there's not, you don't have to be greatly technically minded to put one of these together. They're really quick. They go up. You know, it all comes pre-lubricated, um, which might have been the problem here. I think there was just too much lubrication. Comment below, let's open this up for discussion. If anybody can see anything that I missed, perhaps anybody has any other ideas, perhaps someone has had this exact same problem, then pitch in, let's help out. You know, this is part of what being on YouTube is about. It's part of being a community, you know. Um, it's great to go on YouTube and just find the answer to something or be able to watch a tutorial and do something. But if somebody's having a problem, it's also nice to help out. So, you know, if you have seen this particular problem before, you know, put the solution down. You know, if it's something I've missed or if there's another Ergotron problem, let's hear about it. Let's all pitch in, try and help. Like I say, community. Okay. Right. I shall see you all later. This has been an incredibly long video for some weird reason. See how much I can edit that. See you on the next time. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. And be sure to comment, like, and even subscribe to my channel, Lawrence Can Draw. And if you did like what you saw here, you can see more of it on my website, lawrenceman.co.uk.